I accepted the invitation to take part in this lecture with great pleasure and interest because it focuses on two issues that I think are still pivotal and challenging in academic research and debate. And the first issue is the transfer of Western concepts and categories to different cultural frameworks, and in this case, Islamic culture. Modernity, democracy, secularism, as well as feminism, for example, are all phenomena that took very specific parts in very specific societies, that's our, the Western societies, and that emerged in very specific political and social circumstances. And in its own path, each category developed a specific semantic value. Uh, just take, for example, the concepts of secularism and laicité. Uh, often we use the English word uh, secularism also to translate the French word laicité. And even in Latin languages, there can be some confusion between the two terms, secularism and laicité. Uh, but in fact, secularism, or in Italian we say secolariz secolarizzazione, for instance, and laicité, uh, laicità in Italian, refer to different, to different concepts. Uh, the term laicité was coined in France at the end of the 19th century to indicate the emancipation of uh, uh, elementary schooling from control by the Catholic Church in that country. And later, it came to mean the separation between the institutions of the state and the church as enshrined in the law of 1905. So laicite is a political issue and is the result of a bitter conflict between the French Republic and a very strong religious institution that is uh, uh, the Catholic Church. The word secularization, on the other hand, refers to a desacralization of the world and um, is lessening of the influence of religion as the influence of the profound growth. It's first of all a social and cultural phenomenon, which subsequently and inevitably influences the political world. Um, for example, the United Kingdom, of course, is a secularized country, but we cannot forget that the queen or the king is also the chief of the Anglican Church. So it's a secular country, but it's not exactly a like country. This is very ambiguous also in Europe. Um, so it's quite simple to transfer to the Islamic environment a concept of secularism understood as a diminishing of the social and political function and influence of religion. This is something that takes place even in Islamic societies. But as some Muslim scholars have observed, is much more difficult to transfer to the Islamic environment a concept of laicite, since in Islamic civilization we cannot find a church that could be separated from the political power. Um, also, the relationship between religion and political power in Islamic countries is inverted, is upturned compared to the relationship that we found in the West, especially in Catholic context. Over the centuries, in Catholic countries, governments had the problem to limiting religious interference in political affairs. But in contemporary Muslim societies, we see the opposite happening. We see political interference in the religious life of Muslims. Nowadays, it is the political actors in these countries who decide in which way Muslim citizens should practice their religion. This has taken place in various ways. Uh, secular states like Kemalist Turkey decided that Islam was a threat to modernization and legislated to deny any public dimension, abolishing Islamic schools and uh, Friday was not uh, the fifth day, it was on Sunday, so on. So. Um, meanwhile, Islamist activists are telling Muslims that they should practice a kind of Islam that in fact is not just a conservative one, but a reactionary one. And then there is a huge difference, for example, between Tunisia, which is a quite secularized Muslim country with a reformed Islamic law, and Saudi Arabia. It's very, very conservative. 
But in all these countries, it is not the religious authorities who decide whether the country will be conservative or reformist from the religious point of view, but the political authorities, as Mustafa Kemal in Turkey, Bourguiba in Tunis, and the uh, al Saud family in Saudi Arabia. Now, still looking at the problem of the transfer of Western categories or concepts to the Islamic world, we could talk about the nation state itself. The nation state, as it emerged in the 19th century Europe, is a state that aspires to be homogenous in terms of religious, uh, religion, language, and ethnicity. And this kind of state and society is totally different and indeed antithetical to what Muslims built over the centuries. Muslims used to live in multi-ethnic, multi-religious, and multi-linguistic empires because the Quran itself admits that Muslims can live beside non-Muslims as Christians or Jewish, as minorities that experience discriminations, of course, but never as much as discrimination as experienced in Europe. Um, during the 20th century, the transition from empires to nation states in the Islamic regions produced enormous conflicts and trauma, giving rise to a strong and unusual intolerance towards minorities, all kinds of minorities, so linguistic minorities, and Berbers, Kurds, or religious minorities. Just think about the Armenian genocide in Turkey. The building up of homogenous nation states population even underwent transfer to other regions. An example is the transfer of about one million of uh, orthodox uh, Greek Orthodox Turks from Turkey to Greece and one million of Muslim Greeks to Greece to Turkey at the beginning of the 20th century. Or we can think about Pakistan um, um, and Pakistan, the foundation of Pakistan in 1947, uh, the foundation of Pakistan entailed the transfer of more than seven million Muslims from India to Pakistan, and more of seven millions are of Hindus and Sikhs from Pakistan to India, and in this transfer, about 2,100 persons, people died or were killed in fightings between each other. <clears throat> so the first issue um, is the transfer of Western concepts and categories or model, politi political institutional models to different cultural context. <clears throat> the second pivotal issue, uh, as Professor Beck observed, is the false association of the two terms, Islam and modernity. Uh, whether we say Islam is compatible with modernity or is not compatible with modernity is, is a false association in both cases. We are discussing Islam and modernity, but we could discuss in the same way Islam democracy. In both cases, the assertion Islam is compatible is not compatible with modernity democracy has no real meaning. Uh, as Professor Beck uh, assumed, it is not Islam in itself that is either modern or antiquated, but the interpreters of Islam can be modern or conservative. Islam is not a fixed category, category but is the religion of a complex and composite civilization that's in continuous evolution. Um, Islam was certainly modern and very progressive in some aspects at the time of its very rapid spread to Morocco on the, on the west and to uh, in Spain, Morocco and Spain on the west and uh, Iran and India on the east. Even for women, it established some important rights, uh, for example, the rights uh, of inheritance that for that time were really advanced. Islam was open and progressive in its origins that was so open that it gave birth to the most important Mediterranean civilization of that age, integrating the cultures that it was conquering to give shape to a totally new one. 